Do you remember not having any fear at all when you were a child? Nothing bothered you. You would ride your bike as fast as you could down the street, and if you fell off and hit your head, what would you do? You'd get up and ride it again. Well, that's not quite the case of the fears that we have in our aging years. There's something in your brain, believe it or not, that controls fear. So stay tuned and we'll talk all about these fears and hopefully whoosh them out of our brain. Well, it's a lazy, lazy day today, a Monday. I've been in my jammies and I'm staying there all day. It's been raining for three days, today, all day long. And so I can't get a lot done outside. And I did actually over the past couple days <clears throat> get enough done inside to the point where I'm not going to worry any more about it. The house is pretty much clean. I'm going to go over the floor in the kitchen once more, maybe, maybe vacuum a little here. But when my brothers come, they're not going to even care what this place looks like. We're just going to have a great time visiting. You know, since the last video, which was just two days ago, you all showed so much interest in it. It concerned recovering after a slump in our aging years or um, recovering from an illness or an injury or something. And we started to get into a little bit of the fears that we have as we grow older. And so I decided that I just do another video today and sort of continue that conversation about fear of all of us, the fears we have as we grow older. And when we talk about fear, it's very funny that it goes, there's a sliding scale of what we call fear. And that could be fear of many, many things. An infant, for instance, has no fear at all. And a young child, not much fear at all. And some of these fears that we have are tied to experiences that we might have in the past, or in the case of here we are now in these latter years, and I'm talking about the super years. Those of us that might be in our 70s and 80s and beyond, maybe those of you in your 60s too, Fear kind of um, dips. When you're in your 20s, you seem to have a little bit more fear. Then it dies down and spikes again in your 50s. And the fears that you have are mostly things about the future. Probably number one is financial worries. A lot of people, as they start to realize what the future is going to hold. So we had have fear based on past memories and fear based on the future or what's to come. Now, at this point, you're probably sitting there wondering, okay, what are my fears? Well, guess what? As we age, and I'm talking in our older years, as we keep going, as we keep getting older and older, Believe it or not, your fears diminish somewhat. And I'm talking about, and not the little fears, but I'm talking about those important ones. Uh, one of the ones, which is something a lot of people don't want to discuss, and as Benjamin Franklin quoted many years ago, the only certainty in life are death and taxes. And that's about it, probably. But death is something that people just don't want to talk about. They don't want to think about. But there are so many different ways to think about death. And that depends on who you are and what you believe. And, and so many people believe different things. And you know what you do believe. And you rely on that, especially those of you who have spiritual beliefs of the of eternity then perhaps your fears of of dying would not be 
um, the same as someone else who believes that perhaps they uh, would be reincarnated as something, or maybe other people might believe that when you die, that's it. It's just a big nothing. So, so I, we're not going to get into that, but, but I do think that what we believe certainly affects our thoughts about dying. And, um, I know myself, I was introduced to dying when I was a young child. My mother had this huge Irish family. A lot of her relatives were uh, Irish. They had married Irish people back in New Jersey. And in, in the Catholic religion, there were, you always had an open casket. You you have the mass, and then you would have four days. Well, before all that, you would have four days of what they called a wake. And in those days, uh, all the your relatives and your friends would come and visit, and you would sit there, and the casket would be in the room. And as children, we were brought to all these um, all these happenings. So as a result, I was very familiar with dying. And um, my parents talked about it. Obviously, my brothers and I had many questions as young kids. And th they talked to us a lot about it and made us feel very at ease with it. That it was part of God's plan of life. That we're born, we live a good life, hopefully. And someday, we would go back and join him. And, and that satisfies us. And still does, by the way. Now... Let's talk about what controls your fears. In your prefrontal brain, somewhere in here, you have something called an amygdala. I think that's how it's pronounced, amygdala. And it's, it is in the temporal lobe of your brain, and it's the size of an almond, and it's very infantile when you're born, but as you age from childhood on, it does grow, not necessarily grow in size, but it develops and becomes more controlling. Your emotions of fear and several other emotions are contained here. And, and this is according, and then it sends out stimuli and reactions to fear. This is what controls what you are afraid of. And many times it is a helpful thing because it keeps you from danger in the case of injuries, for instance. Now, maybe not necessarily as a child, as I gave the example of riding a bike, hitting your head, falling off and getting back on, but definitely older. If you come across something, something happens to you, a fearful thing, um, maybe a car accident or, or a dog bite or something, then that affects your fear in the future. And, and this might be, for instance, in the case of, of adults, older adults, when you are exposed to people who are in their latter years and they're very sick or they're dying or they don't have financial means to be able to take care of themselves or they're lonely, your responses to that would say, ooh, that could be me, or that might be me. And that is the fear that is coming due to your stimuli or your reactions to something that you saw in the past. Now, when we talk about fears in old age, some of them are very, very simple. And I'll bet you could count all of those on one hand, and you could, you could go along with me. Now, those are fearful of sickness, serious sickness, fearful of being alone at some point or abandoned, fearing of perhaps having to go into a nursing home. And of course, we put in there the fear of, de of death or dying. Uh, definitely one of the top ones is financial fears. You know, we could add uh, the uh, fear of cognitive decline loss of dignity. There's so many other little fears in there, more worries than anything else. But worrying about your cognitive um, uh, decline, you know, 
there's a natural thing that happens as you get older. You know, every once in a while, I can't remember the name of one of my best friends. And, and then five minutes later, oh yeah, that's it. Now that's not don't worry about that. That happens, that type of thing happens to everybody. Or a word that you know you know when you want to say and it's just not there for that moment. So so that's a natural thing. And there are other more serious signs to a, a real um, inclination toward a, some sort of a dementia. You realize that maybe you've gotten to a certain age and you might not have enough saved up in your retirement to afford the medicines you might need, or perhaps if you did need further medical, um, of course we have Medicare and I hope everybody is, everyone over I think it's 65 is into Medicare. Maybe it's 67 now, but I'm not sure. But um, a lot of people fear that. I don't fear uh, something like that. But I do wish that perhaps, and those of you who are maybe in your 40s or 50s, you know, there's something called long-term insurance. It's called long-term care. And it's different from your regular insurance. If you start it young enough, in maybe your 30s or your 40s, your payments every month are much smaller than it would be than if you started it in your 60s or something. And this covers going into uh, a skilled nursing home or some kind of a home where you would get care if there's no one else to take care of you or you are alone. Now, we don't have that. And um, it's, it's a tiny worry of mine. But on the other hand, I'm not going to let it dominate me at this point. Yes, everybody worries about the financial worries, and, and that's a big thing. Most of us are on fixed incomes in our older ages, and if you have, by any chance, been able to save a lot of money, I think that's great. I have had comments uh, from the last video. Some are humorous, and we're going to have a little section of humor, and we're going to laugh at some point, too, just to kind of lighten up here. And I have to quote one of um, my friends, Candy, you know you are. I just laughed when I uh, heard your comment. It was a short one. And I was talking, I was talking in the last video about Moosey and I had realized that we were living in a, in a home where two old people lived because of all the paraphernalia that goes with aging was sitting all around the house. And I mentioned our walkers that we both have right now. I probably won't be needing one for a while, but the doctor wanted me to use a walker for a while when I started to be up and about. But we have the canes around, we have the toilet riser, which is the godsend of it all, and various other things that I mentioned that she's, so she said, well, I have all those things too, Nanny, but I also have some grab bars in the shower. And I thought, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. We also have a, a seat in the shower where Moosey can sit down and take his showers. And we have a special shower where you have the, the big long cord where he can actually use the handheld type shower. We have grab bars next to the toilet so we can get up. Well, I don't need those now, now that I have my, my toilet riser. But we also have a ramp right outside the front door of the cottage. So that was when Moosey was using, um, when he first came home from the hospital and he needed a wheelchair. We were going up and down with the wheelchair with him for a while. Well, we also use that for the rollators going in and out and various other things that I didn't mention. And don't get me started on the the shoe boxes of medications and pills and and lotions for the dry skin and various other things. The shelves in the bathroom that are nothing but pills. When we first moved in here 20 years ago, I think I had some flowers and a bowl of something else and some pretty uh, cups to hold our toothbrushes and things. Now it's nothing but pills and medications and um, vitamins and you name it. <laughs> so I thought that was funny, Candy. Thank you. <laughs> that did give me a 
get me started on some other things. One good thing about fear and aging is that the older you get, the more it decreases. Now that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's a matter of the fact that you honestly don't have control over too many of your fears. And you know, instead of fears, that's kind of a strong word, we might call it worries. And as we said in the last video, we want to try and reduce those worries and that stress. And worrying causes stress. And we want to get rid of that. Now, one of the comments that I just loved, and I can't remember who said this. I think it was Sandra said that the way that they help reduce the stress in their life or the fears of various things that um, I was talking about things that we do that bring on injuries and things, how I used to carry three uh, bags of groceries in each hand into the house and lifting too many things. Well, this woman says, I figured out how to simplify my life. I don't buy the 36 bottles of water anymore. I'm down to the 24. I don't buy the five gallon water for my dispenser. I'm now down to the three gallon. I don't put all the Christmas decorations on my tree anymore. I only put what I think I'll have the energy to take down two weeks after Christmas is over and put it away. And I thought all these things, that's me. That was me this year. For instance, I, I look at those 36 bottles of water and I, I thought, no way am I going there. Now, perhaps if there's a nice gentleman or young guy around, I could ask him to put it in my cart as long as he's, so I have someone to put it in. But then I have to leave it in the car and bring in a couple of bottles at a time, which is fine by me. I don't have the room in the cottage for all that anyway. But concerning the tree decoration, that's so funny because for the past two years, I have decorations that will go to all the children. In fact, Mikey wants to dig into these now and they all should. I have buckets of them outside. And the the, one, the only one we bring in now is a big bag of, of red glass balls. <laughs> and the reason we put them on is we have tons of lights. The kids put tons of lights on our tree, but the balls look so nice. And we see them in the daytime and the nighttime and maybe one or two really special ones. And the rest of them stay there, mainly because I think, oh boy, I'm gonna take each one of these down and have to wrap it up and put it away. This year, I did not bring out my Santas that I normally put on the mantle. I did not bring out my collection of carolers. I have a whole bunch of carolers. I did not bring out my village, which I always put on the piano with snow and trees. And the thing that bothered me the most was I didn't even bring out the creche. And I have all these wonderful figures of of um, Mary and, and Joseph and the baby Jesus, but I have shepherds and and camels and oh, a wonderful assortment, plus a, a great um, stable, a wooden stable, because you, you dread taking it all down. Now, these are called adjustments in our lives as we grow older. Are you like that too? In fact, you can tell me if you'd like some of the adjustments you've made in your life to avoid the stress. So, so now I call it two oldies but goodies live in this home sweet home. What fears do you have? Some of these fears, we have to realize that if we, and, and I don't even believe it, it's worthwhile talking about some of these, like like your health, you, you know, we try and do the best we can by eating right, by getting exercise, by having our checkups with the doctor, and that's all we can do. And if something serious happens to us, like an injury or a, a serious uh, health risk, we hope that the doctors can take care of it for us. But, you know, I keep going back to um, what I learned from a child on that it's all in God's hands. That's my belief. And um, worrying will not, will not help us. 
Now, let's talk about what can we do about these fears that we have. The fear of falling, the fear, the fear of serious illness, the fear of loneliness, being left alone, the fear of f financial worries, all of these. What can we do? Not much, can we? So, why don't we just try and do the best we can with everything? These are normal fears for everyone. And I just say, if we can get back to gratitude for the fact that we're here, for what we have, finding the simple joys of life. I talk about that all the time. We're adjusting our lives to living a different way. And you know, it's not so bad. As a matter of fact, Musi and I were saying this morning, as we listened to the rain on the roof for the third day in a row, <laughs> And the fact that the house was pretty clean and we've we've done a good share of things here with the help of the kids over the past couple days. And there was not much we could do other than the fact that I did spill a cup of coffee on my duvet and I had to take that off the bed and I have to wash that. But, but that's a little thing. That's not, I didn't even get upset at that. But we kind of said, hey, is, isn't this a cozy day? What are you going to do today? He said, and, and I was on my bed just kind of talking to Google. And I said, you know what? Nothing. I'm just going to enjoy the sound of the rain and realizing that what, what more can I do on a rainy day? I can't get out and work in the patio. I can't get out and clean out my car, which does have to be done before two more days. So I'm going to enjoy what I have. And that's called acceptance, which we did talk about that. And accepting the joy that comes along with not having a darn thing to do today or a darn thing to even worry about. <laughs> I think we have to train ourselves to get into that position. I know a lot of you can, depression enters into it. Try and, and get some help with that. Just realize that, that, you know, life is what it's going to be. World affairs, health, everything else. So just enjoy the years that we have left and let somebody else worry about it all. Oh, easy for you to say, nanny, right? And and that's true because I've always been known as a worry ward. But that was always about kids and grandkids and everybody else. I still worry about everybody else. But they're little worries. Well, some of them are little worries. But, you know, in in these super ager years, that's what it comes down to. So that big, long list of all those things, fear of falling, just be more careful. Uh, if you don't have the financial means, there's, there's help for you in the community uh, and through Medicare. I can give you a little bit of help with each one of them when I tell you what can be done, but not much. So I, I know that I'm in a better position than a lot of people. And I have to keep saying that because I know some people um, are in terrible straits with their health, with the health of, of a mate or a husband. And this all just might not apply to you at all. And I send my prayers and my love to all of you. Uh, but please know that, that I feel grateful for my situation. It's not perfect. Musi has had some pretty hard things happen to him over the past five or six years. Mine are kind of just starting and um, there's not much we can do about it. And I am not comparing myself to some of you whose hardships are are so much worse. And you, you do have my prayers. So I think we've covered it. I hope that you um, keep in mind that 
for those of you who are maybe in your 50s or 60s, that as you get older, remember this, this is important, your fears and your worries do lessen. You figure out a way to, to realize that there's not much that you can do about it in the way of worrying. And it comes down to gratitude and acceptance once again. Well, that's another wrap. <laughs> it's still raining outside. And I think I have to go to the store and get some um, Bisquick and some raisins and things. There's a few things that I want to make ahead of time for my brother's visit. They uh, fly from New Jersey tomorrow. And by the way, the whole rest of the week that they're here, it's supposed to be sunny and nice. By the end of the week, believe it or not, our temperatures are going to go up into the high 70s and maybe one or two days before they leave, we will hit 80. Wouldn't that be wonderful for them because it's so cold and snowy back, back east? I, I hope for that. Thank you so much for all of your love, all of the wonderful comments that you make all the time. And for those of you who have just subscribed, we have uh, quite a number of new subscribers. So that's why I kind of went into this part two of this discussion. And um, it seems to be a topic that a lot of you want to get into. And, and let's just treat it... Um, Let's just go with the flow as much as we can and, and lessen our worries. As I said, getting old, getting older is not so bad at all. There's one thing that I want to end this with, and Moosey came up with this. He remembered this quote, and it's a quote that I'm going to say right now. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, some consider that a prayer, but it was written, I believe, by um, a man, a German a name that I can't remember. So thanks once again, everybody. I love you and thanks for all you new subscribers. Keep making those great comments. I'm enjoying them so much. See you real soon, and God bless us all. Oh God, grant me the what? What's the first thing? Oh, grant me the serenity to change the... No, I didn't... Read it. I, I did write it, and now I can't find it. Yeah. Grant me the serenity to accept the things. Oh, God, I got to write the whole thing out. I just wrote buzzwords down. Grant me the serenity to change the things I cannot change. No. To accept. Yeah. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. <laughs> and the courage. The courage to accept. To, to the courage to accept the things I cannot change. Oh, oh God. I can't look down and talk at the same time. Well, Grant me the serenity to change the things to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to, what? Did you write it down? I did. The courage to know the difference. No, wisdom to know the difference. What's the second one? The courage to what? Well, there you are. Change. Huh? Sure. The, the courage to change what? I'm on the phone to Bill. <laughs>